Okay, so once upon a time there was a theory. It was called the Hermetic Thesis. And if you wanted to get along in school, you had to believe this Hermetic Thesis. Some of you watching this have mummies and daddies who had to bow down to the Hermetic Thesis. Yep, once upon a time was as recent as the 80s and 90s. But the truth is that the Hermetic Thesis was a coping mechanism. You might call it the Great White Cope. I'll explain. To make sense of the black faces they were seeing all over the artifacts of Egypt and Kush, 19th century European scholars classed the ancient Egyptians and Nubians as a dark-skinned subgroup of the uh, Caucasian race. They called this the Hermetic race. Overnight, the black and brown faces seen on ancient African artifacts with kinky hair and sometimes aquiline, sometimes broad noses, but always with full lips like this. Because look at the, the, the lips of the, the Negroes like that and the nose like this. It's not really in the Egyptian uh, origin at all. All became, wait for it, black white people. Put simply, the Hermetic theory allowed people who sucked at life and couldn't deal with their society's moral shortcomings to carry on their lie that black people deserved to be subjugated because they had never developed any noteworthy communities or civilizations. Egypt? Nope. Kush? Nah. Those belonged to a group of dark-skinned white people, the quote, Hamites who according to the Hermetic theory were superior to or more advanced than the quote Negroid populations of quote sub-Saharan Africa. Now the year currently is 2025. Western science claims to have abandoned such obviously mind-addling theories but really it's all PR. Like Tatamkulu Africa once wrote, nothing's changed. Today, to explain away the fact that black people or people of an African extraction sailed across the globe and settled the farthest flung and most remote places on this earth, eons before Caucasians in tights, worked out the earth was round, Western science is committed to telling you that people who look like uh, this, found in the Indian Ocean, have nothing to do with Africans. Try this for an experiment. Pretend you never heard the intro to this video. Now look at the next few images on your screen. As you do that, pretend you have a five-year-old asking you, Mommy, Daddy, where are those people from? What would your reflexes make you blurt out? Here goes. <clears throat> okay, that's enough thinking for you. We now return to our regularly scheduled programming. It's programming because you're not supposed to believe your lying eyes. Don't look at their faces and features, their nature-based and eco-friendly way of living, their languages, sometimes maintaining the cliques and nuances still replete along the East African belt. No, no, no. Don't even look at the ancient records by the Greeks, Persians and Romans documenting seafaring Ethiopians sailing back and forth across the Indian Ocean. Just look over here at our cooked up genetic samples and be done at that. Clearly, genetics is a useful science, but unbeknownst to the masses, there is overwhelmingly more we don't know about the human genome than what we do know. A fun fact, the vast majority of our DNA is a mystery to science. Scientists simply don't know what they do. So what do the modern high priests of nothing do? They call these genes junk DNA. A preposterous notion to be sure. But when the evidence of your eyes and ears don't match your very limited knowledge of a field, you simply keep digging, right? Wrong. The Hermetic theory types are a different breed of human altogether. They double down. 
they come up with ridiculous conclusions akin to the emetic race theory which claim Andaman Islanders are actually Asian. What follows is the recruitment of all and sundry to help prop up this warped view. Fables of Asians with tanning beds for backpacks trekking across primordial oceans of ice, extra zeros added on to guesstimates of when homo this and homo that arrived on this and that island, everything is recruited to make their coping mechanism make sense. To my black diaspora claiming not all black people are African, you still don't get it. Strictly speaking, that might be true, but the people you're getting in bed with when you say that are effectively telling you that these people aren't even black, they're Asians with a tan. So it's not about Africa, it's about denying that the black diaspora ever traversed land, assailed oceans, built self-sustaining communities and polities without the help of, I don't know, slave ships? The politics comes first, then the science, quote unquote. The Khoisan were once savage Negroes, quote unquote, who killed Portuguese invaders. Their women were paraded all over Europe as, quote, Hottentot Venuses. Then when Boers and Africaners needed to claim South Africa was virgin land, in a bid to ward off the claims of the more socially united and politically threatening Zulu nation, the Khoisan, who inhabited much of South Africa along with the Zulus, suddenly became Asian admixed or non-black natives of Africa. Again, the politics comes first, then the science. Or to put it like my Jamaican brothers and sisters might put it, the bad mind that might come first, then the science. You get? Besides, all this is easily debunked intellectually and scientifically. If you want a more fleshed out video on this topic, then help this video get, let's see, 1k likes in the next 24 hours, and it's as good as done. Until the next time though, Trill Nation from Custer Compton. This has been yours truly, Trill Black, no doubt.